In this video, we are going to be learning about true dimensional and three dimensional shapes and two major ways that they relate to one another. So there are two common ways 2D and 3D shapes are associated. One is by creating cross sections and the other is by creating solids of revolution. So first let's talk about cross sections. So the definition of a cross section is a two dimensional shape that's obtained when a plane intersects a solid. And remember a solid here is just a word that describes a 3D shape. So this is again, we're taking a 3D shape and we're getting or obtaining a 2D shape. So it helps to think about a real life example of cross sections. So imagine that you have an orange, which is shaped like a sphere. When you start slicing it, you're going to get circular slices. Those are the cross sections basically. So the cross section of a sphere, when you slice it from top to bottom, right through the middle is a circle. Some hints to help you with cross section questions. Whenever the cross section is made parallel to the base of the solid, the cross section is the same shape as the base. We'll look at some examples of that in a few minutes. And when it's perpendicular to the base, the cross section is shaped like the lateral faces, like the sides of it. Um, and we'll talk about, okay, what if the, the uh, shape does not have actual sides? We'll talk about what that means. First, let's introduce solids of revolution as well. A solid of revolution is a 3D shape that's formed by rotating a 2D shape about an axis of revolution. So now we're starting with a two-dimensional shape, rotating it, and getting a three-dimensional shape. It must have rounded features. An example would be a cylinder. If you think about a cylinder, the bases are circles, so that's where you get the rounded features. A non-example would be, for instance, a square pyramid. There's nothing rounded about a square pyramid. Let's just talk a second so you can understand um, like a visual a little bit more. Let's talk about the example I put here of a cylinder. Let's say that you have a rectangle. And I'm going to make this rectangle look like a door. Okay. If you've ever been in a big building and you've seen a revolving door before, what happens to the door is it starts spinning around this like center piece, that's what we're calling the axis of rotation or axis of revolution. So at some point that door ends up over here, right? Cause it's spinning around. And if you picture what the revolving door looks like, it's circular at the top and it's circular at the bottom. So the rectangle shape, when rotated about one of its sides, forms the three-dimensional shape cylinder. So it helps sometimes to think about a real life example. So here's a very common one with revolving doors. All right, let's look at some practice questions. Number one, a plane intersects a right circular cone perpendicular to its base. The cross section can be described as what two-dimensional shape? So this is like you're taking a cone and you're slicing it perpendicular to the base. It's forming a right angle with the base of the shape. So the hint I gave you on the previous page is that whenever the cross section is perpendicular to the base, it's in a way the shape of the cross section is like the shape of the lateral faces or sides. If you look at a cone head on, it looks triangular. So the cross section of a cone when cut perpendicular to the base is a triangle. Number two, a plane intersects a hexagonal prism parallel to its base. So now we're going, look at the base in the picture here, parallel. The cross section can be described as what two dimensional shape. So the hinge from the previous page, if it's parallel to the base, it's the same shape as the base. A hexagonal prism has hexagon bases. So my answer would be hexagon here. Okay, number three, an isosceles triangle is rotated continuously about its altitude. What 3D solid is formed? Okay, so let's draw in the altitude here. So the altitude starts at that top vertex of an isosceles triangle and is perpendicular to the base. So imagine we're rotating it. So for instance, let's start with point C. If we're rotating it, it's going to eventually land where A is and A is going to land where C is. It's going to look or sound like in a way that we're reflecting the shape. If you imagine me reflecting this triangle 
over the altitude, it's just going to be over here. Okay. So even though we're talking about solids of revolution or rotation, when we're kind of drawing it out, it's almost like in a way that we're reflecting it. The way we add in the rotation part of it is whatever side was perpendicular to the axis of rotation, that's going to look rounded. So I'm going to draw that circular piece in here. And now this should look like a cone. So this is a very common example. Good to memorize that whenever you have a triangle and you rotate it continuously, you will get a cone. Number four, a rectangle is rotated continuously about one of its sides. What 3D solid is formed? That's a cylinder. That's like our revolving door example from the first page. Number five, the square pyramid shown below is cut parallel to its base. What shape is the cross section formed by this cut? Well, remember that when you have a cross section parallel to the base, it is going to be the same shape as the base. The base is a square, so that's my answer here. Number six, the right triangle below is rotated continuously about side BC. What 3D solid is formed and what is the radius of this solid? So we're gonna reflect over BC and we're going to curve the side that is perpendicular to that line of reflection, okay? Which is really, again, that's like our code for our axis of revolution. And you can see that we get a cone. It's kind of looking like it's on its side here. And we can hopefully see if you tilt your head that the radius of the cone is eight centimeters. If, by the way, the question asked about rotating about AC, then the answer would have been six centimeters for the radius. Number seven, a cross section is taken from a right circular cylinder. Which shape could not be the shape of the cross section? So if we have a cylinder, we're looking for which one cannot be the case. It is definitely possible for us to get a circle. That would be if it was cut parallel to the base. So A is definitely a possibility. If it was cut perpendicular to the base, I know we don't have actual like sides of a cylinder, but head on, it looks rectangular. If you think about um, like a can of soup, cylindrical right but if you unwrap the label it's shaped like a rectangle so you can associate that with a cylinder so rectangle is definitely possible an oval is possible too because we can take a cylinder and slice it diagonally like i could go in here slice it diagonally and i'm going to get an oval shape so that's possible but it's not possible for me to take a slice of a cylinder and end up with a triangle so my answer is choice d all right, for our last question, a circle is continuously rotated about its diameter. So I'm going to just draw this out. Okay, so when we're rotating about an axis of rotation, an axis of revolution, remember, we're going to think about it for a second, like it's a reflection. So imagine me taking the top half of this circle, right? So like this piece here reflecting it, it's just going to land right on top of the pre-existing circle. Okay. And the same thing's going to happen the other way. We're going to curve the pieces that are perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And this picture will look a little funny, but if you imagine this being curved and three-dimensional, hopefully we can see that this is going to create a sphere. Hopefully this lesson taught you a little bit more about how 2D and 3D shapes relate to one another.